Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create your first web application with C Sharp, Visual Studio, and ASP.NET. What you'll see when you're done here is this default page here, Home, and a second page in this website called Privacy. We're going to modify the custom message here, and then when we're done creating this, I'll take you through some of the folders that you would see in a Visual Studio project. So over here in the Solution Explorer, there's a lot of things to look at. And so I'll help you understand how a web project is built. So let's get started in building this project. You can see that I have Windows 10 on my computer. You're going to need Windows and you're going to need Visual Studio. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019 and I have applied all the updates here in December of 2020. So if you're from the future, he might have a slightly different kind of a setup, but it'll be similar for a while. So I'm going to create a new project here and then select here from the list the appropriate language. So I am selecting C Sharp is what I'm wanting. Uh, I want to make a web application, so I'm selecting Web App. And then I'm selecting ASP Core Web Application. And so let's see what happens when I go next. So now I'm going to have to give it a name. So let's call this thing my first app. And uh, you can name it anything you want, but uh, this seems appropriate. The solution name doesn't have to be the same. You can call it something different. And a lot of people choose to choose a different name because it helps you uh, distinguish between a project and a solution. Let's click uh, Create. And then we're going to have one more option that's important about the version of .NET that you're trying to target. So I'm selecting here on the list the uh, Core Web Application Model View Controller. In this class, we're going to mostly focus in on this design pattern. Now at the top, you can see that there is a version of .NET that we're trying to target. And at the recording time, version 5.0 is the current version. And so I'm going to select that. You can see that we have core and framework. And if you choose framework, you're stuck with an older version. So I'm going to choose core and then version 5. Select the model view controller. I'm going to not have any authentication. So right now it's none. If you want to change that, you can change here. But uh, none will keep it simple. And uh, look at the rest of the settings here and click create. So this will take a second for us to create a project and then we'll be able to run it right away. So you can see that the application is up and running. Now I have a welcome screen. If you want to go ahead and look through all these uh, documentations, Microsoft has pretty good docs. Let's close this though and let's see what's in our project. So we have a solution and a project over here in the Solution Explorer. You can see that we have views, models, and controllers, which is why this project was an MVC project. M stands for model, view stands for, or V stands for view, and C is for controller. And so we have those three sections in our application. Now I just want to see how this works, so I'm going to click the green button that says IIS Express. So that will launch the Internet Information Server, a web server that's built into Visual Studio. And uh, it'll take a few minutes here, perhaps, if you have a slow computer to compile. The first time is always a little bit slow. So it looks like my application is up and running. You can see that I have a web browser. I'm using Chrome as my default. And so localhost is the server that is built into the computer. And the port number follows, it is 44309. It really doesn't matter that that port number was chosen, but there you just need to know it's there. Now, there are two different things that I can look at on this app. I can click Privacy, and I can see a page about privacy, and then click Home, and then come back to the Welcome screen. So let's see where those things were programmed and how all of this works, and we can uh, make one customization here before we're done. So I'm going to close the web browser, which will bring me back into Visual Studio, and then I'm going to look in the folders over here. So let's start with the views. That's probably the simplest thing to understand. So a view is a web page. And you can see that there are two folders that are set up, home and shared. So let's look in home and see what's going on there. So we have an index page. And if I open that up, you will see that this is the welcome page that we saw just a second ago. So you could edit any of this text. It's HTML code and you can customize it. Let's look at the privacy page. I'm going to double click on privacy and you can see that we also have a simple page here. So I'm going to experiment here. I'm going to delete the message that was in the paragraph tag 
and I'm going to change it to something else. So go ahead and update this with something different and then let's run the app again. So I'm going to click the IIS Express button and this time it'll compile and run hopefully a little bit faster and we'll see the same pages but now with our custom message. So up comes the Chrome browser and I'm going to wait a second more hopefully and then I can click on these links. So here is the app, it's up and running. I click on privacy and you can see I have a new message. And so I can edit the views and they show up on the page. So you can guess that this is just a partial view. This uh, welcome message and this security message are not the entire page. If we want to see the rest of it, we go into shared and then choose layout. And you can see that the underscore layout is the name. And that tells us that it is a component that has multiple parts. And so you can see there's a lot more code in here, HTML code and CSS code. And you can see that there is a header with a bunch of classes. And so all of this comes from uh, Bootstrap. This is the default uh, CSS formatting for a C-sharp web page. And let's get down to the section called Main Body. And so there is one line in here called Render Body. So you'll notice that there's a mixture of C-sharp and there's a mixture of HTML, both on the same page. And so we're going to notice that throughout the course is that we can blend these two together. Notice the extension on the files is not HTML and it's not CS, it's a combination. So that's C-sharp and HTML blended together into a document. Now this document is called Razor Format and uh, we'll be using that extensively throughout the rest of the lessons that I'm going to show you. So let's uh, go back to our uh, privacy page and I'm going to include one more item. So I'm going to include something called at viewbag.message. Now at viewbag means that I am bringing a piece of uh, data in from the controller and we'll get to that in a second. But this is a custom message. Right now it's undefined. So if I run the program, there should be no difference. There should be no message yet. So I run the application. You can see that we have welcome and I click on privacy and now I have the same exact thing. So this view bag did not affect the page at all, but now we're going to update it so that we will have a custom message here. Now if I want to modify this uh, variable, I can go into the controllers. So open up the controllers folder and choose home controller. Now inside home controller, we're going to see C sharp code. There is no HTML here. This is all about code that is uh, running in the background. Now two important lines that you're going to notice here are a section that is got a title called index and another one called privacy. And so if you've guessed that these correspond to the two different pages that we've built, then you're correct. Now if I wanted to update this, I could uh, add something here in view bag. So let's go to view bag and you can see I have some type ahead help and I can type in message and I'm going to type in a string. So view bag is a very flexible property that you can add different tags to and I'm just naming this one message. So I'm going to say something about security. And uh, you can also put other tags in if you want. So I'm going to add another tag called my favorite color and set it to green. So literally you can set any kind of property you want after view bag. It's a very flexible object. Let's see what happens when I run this again. So here's the application up and running again. Let's go ahead and click privacy. And this time we can see the custom message that came through the view bag. So if it was defined, then it is displayed here as security is everyone's business. Now the other message that I set was called my favorite color and I didn't tell the uh, page to do anything. And so it just ignored it. But that's a uh, setup for a simple um, model, view, and controller. Well, at least those controllers and views. We haven't looked at models yet. But let's go and add one more item here. So down in this section here, there's a uh, function called view, and it's being returned. So what is a view? Well, and why doesn't it have any kind of a name here? We could optionally put this word in here, privacy. And that corresponds to the view over here in home. So privacy.shhtml. And so I can put in privacy, which is just the front end of that file name. And the app should still work the same as it did before. So go ahead and put that privacy variable in there or that string and run the app and see how it works. 
All right, so it looks like it's up and running. I click on privacy and it works just like it did before. So optionally, I am allowed to use the string for privacy if I want to correspond to the uh, file name over here. And if I leave it out, like I have up here, index is the assumed view that we're looking at. So privacy is this function name, and so it's assumed that privacy comes in here. So it is optional to put privacy in, and in the future we will use custom names if we want to point to a different, uh, different view than what we had here. So this is just a very introduction video. We're going to do all of the uh, details in future videos, but this will get you started. Now I want to show one more thing is called a debugger. So a debugger is the ability to trace variables in your program. So I have used one variable here called viewbag and I'm going to set a breakpoint here in the line 30 on my computer and I get a little red dot that says just before I execute this program or this line I am going to stop the program and allow myself to view the contents of variables. Let's go ahead and try this again and see what happens. We'll get different behavior this time. Okay, so nothing changed as far as the application goes, but now when I click privacy, I'm going to stop the program now, and you can see that the breakpoint right here on line 30 has been reached. Now the benefit of a debugger is that you're allowed to come in here and look at the properties of things, such as viewbag. So now I can uh, hover over view bag and you can see that I have different properties that if I look inside of here, I can see that there's data and hopefully I can find these uh, messages. So somewhere in here is going to be a property called, uh, I don't know, message and another one called my favorite color. Let's see if we can find that somewhere. Here we go, values. So if I look in values, you can see that I have value zero and value one and both of those were set. You can also see the values down here under view bag in this section. So I can open up the non-public me members view the data and I'm going to see values found down here as well. So this is a very useful way to trace your program and find out what things are set at what time in the execution. So here's your challenge. What I'd like you to do now is to modify the privacy page here Working with CSS and the view bag, send in more than just a message or my favorite color. Try experimenting with other uh, HTML properties and more items from the view bag. So good luck on that. And in the next video, we're going to go with more advanced topics of how to create a controller, a model, and a view here in C Sharp. So thanks for watching and come right back.